If you were asked, who was the most powerful pirate of all time, you might suggest Blackbeard or Sir Francis Drake or countless others. However, the most powerful pirate of all time in terms of number was Zheng Yi Sao, who once drove five US Navy schooners away, captured a Portuguese brig, and blockaded a tribute mission from Thailand all in one day. At her peak, she commanded roughly 1,500 ships and 18,000 men, whereas someone like Blackbeard controlled less than 1% of that, with only 20 ships and 500 men under his control. Sir Francis Drake controlled even fewer with five ships and just 73 men. Zheng Yi Sao had simply reached a size and scale that nobody had ever dreamt of. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where we'll take a deep dive into the life of the overlooked queen of the pirate world. Before marriage, Zheng Yi Sao was known as Qing Shi and grew up in the poverty-stricken province of Guangdong in South China. Born in 1775, times were so tough that during her early adult life, Shi's only way of survival was to engage in prostitution. She worked on one of the flower boats, which were essentially small boats which operated as brothels. Then, in 1801, at the age of 26, she finally found an escape route from this life. Zheng Yi, a famous pirate in the area, had taken a shine to Qing Shi. Zheng Yi was a hugely powerful man who came from a long lineage of pirates and had forged strong ties with the Mok dynasty that ruled South China and Vietnam at the time. His fleet operated from Guangdong and preyed upon merchant ships sailing through the area. It's debated on how exactly their marriage came about, but either Zheng Yi proposed to her in the brothel she was working in or abducted her in a raid. Either way, it was this moment that lifted her out of poverty and transformed her life forever. Qing Shi agreed to marry Zheng Yi, meaning her name was changed to Zheng Yi Sao meaning the wife of Zheng Yi. She was clearly a woman of ambition, as she would only agree to marry under certain conditions and wasn't content to just perform the role of faithful wife. She requested that she co-run Zheng Yi's famous Red Fleet, and the famous pirate agreed. In their early marriage years, Vietnam had experienced the Tay Son Rebellion, where an army led by two brothers had taken over Vietnam and presented a threat to China. The Tay Son brothers hired the pirates as privateers, who would help fight off the Chinese government forces, as well as potential tax from the Vietnamese forces they had overthrown. The Tay Son brothers would hold Vietnam until 1802, when they were overthrown and the pirates had to flee the Vietnamese coast, thereby losing their safe harbor. The pirates returned to the Cantonese coast, and instead of losing power, actually forged relationships with other pirates around the region. While other pirates worked as privateers on behalf of other governments, this group was now completely independent and now a highly dangerous force on the South China Seas. By 1804, their fleet, known as the Red Fleet, consisted of 400 local ships called junks and 70,000 men. The fleet was led by their red-colored ship, with the other ships divided into subgroups of black, white, blue, yellow, and green fleets. The operations had grown to the extent that they owned all of the pirate fleets on the China coast, stretching from the Vietnam border in the west to Taiwan in the east. Larry Fane, who has written a novel based upon Zheng Yi Sao, said, at a certain point, she was literally the brains behind the operation. Their marriage did not go swimmingly though, and it was rumored that Zheng Yi had a secret affection for a much younger man, a Tonkin fisherman named Cheng Pao. To keep close to Cheng Pao, Zheng made him his adopted son. Cheng Pao went on to become a highly respected member of the fleet. It was quite common for captains and especially pirates to take a young boy under their wing who showed promise. A quite disturbing aspect of this relationship was that the captain would also be intimate with this young boy. In 1807, Zheng Yi drowned and passed away. It was disputed whether it was accidental or if he was murdered by rival pirates. Other accounts suggest that Zheng Yi Sao killed him herself. The latter theory, however, does not make much sense. Zheng Yi Sao was now a widow and therefore in danger of losing her entire fleet. She could have left the pirate life there and then, but her desire for power remained. The fleet now contained 600 ships and a crew of thousands of outlaws. Would they respect a woman as their leader? Zheng Yi Sao's job was now to cement ties with the most powerful members of the crew. She quickly struck a partnership with Cheng Pao, because he was technically Zheng Yi's heir as his adopted son, and at the time, a person of very high rank and esteem. In a strange twist of events, the very two who competed for the affection of Zheng Yi became lovers themselves and were soon married. Therefore, they adopted a new structure to control the Red Fleet. In the same way as before, Zheng Yi Sao would run things behind the scenes, and Cheng Pao would be the spokesperson to the group. This new leadership was highly successful. The ships would attack on all fronts, with the smaller boats raiding coastal villages and the larger boats going out to sea and attacking merchant ships and even the Chinese Navy. Within a few years, the fleet destroyed 63 of Guangdong Province's 135 military vessels, 
The Chinese commanders in charge of apprehending her spent most of their time on shore and often avoided battle at sea. Zheng Yisao was very tactically astute. Like a Sicilian mafioso, the fleet would force farmers and businesses to provide protection payments, which would bring in a steady stream of income. There were financial offices in these towns collecting the payments, and it was run like a proper business. There were also spies within the ranks too, so she would always be reliably informed of any possible traitors. Speaking about this period, Larry Fane said, By the time these pirates came along, the government had pretty much given up, and that's another reason why they were so successful, and they kind of filled a vacuum because around this time, the emperor essentially didn't care. With the pirates extracting money from people through protection orders and passes, they didn't need to raid, terrorize, and kidnap other people, and being the de facto ruling force, ironically, brought peace to the area. Diane Murray, a professor from the University of Notre Dame, commented on how she had a surprisingly progressive rule of laws. Female captives were theoretically protected from sexual assault, and while pirates could take them as wives, mistreatment or infidelity was punishable by death. It's a further testament to Zheng Yi Sao's skill as a pirate that she managed to retire and live out a peaceful end to her life. She survived all the battles, storms, and potential mutinies and jumped at the right chance to step away from her life of piracy. Tension was growing between the Red and Black fleets, which made her job as head commander a lot more difficult. The Chinese government was also desperate to stop the raids and offered an amnesty in exchange for the pirates surrendering. So, in 1810, Zheng Yi Sao retired and moved away from piracy altogether. Her husband was allowed to keep some ships and became a navy officer for the Chinese government and was now ironically on the other side fighting against pirates in the area. She then got to live the quiet life as the wife of a high-ranking naval officer. He then died in 1822 and Zheng Yi Sao went on to run her own gambling business. At the age of 69, she passed away, which is a ripe old age for a famous pirate. Like Blackbeard and other famous pirates, there are some aspects of this story that are historical and some that are of legend. Historians believe that a lot of the romanticized tales came from the Portuguese or British who visited and the Chinese simply don't glorify pirates in the same way as Westerners do. The only Chinese sources are from court documents that were written down, so we don't really have the Chinese view of these powerful pirates. Whatever the full story is, she was a truly fascinating woman who certainly left her mark on the world. For more videos on the most amazing, uninteresting topics and forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel. Like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.